Oh, hi. <clears throat> um, and please don't tell me this is not relevant because I want to explain why it's relevant. Um, as the board knows, I was before you on November 3rd, 2005, about an appeal of a department permit. And the department staff, Dana Murch, stood before you and said, you don't have to do this because Mr. Watts can always go through the, the reopener clause in Chapter 2, Section 27. And in fact, he's already doing that. So you don't need to go through this regulatory vehicle because Mr. Watts has the option to go through that regulatory vehicle. Well, here I am. I'm going through the regulatory vehicle, and now the department's saying, oh, that's not the right regulatory vehicle either. And the department told CLF at Gulf Island and Deer Rips, we don't have to put a specific eel reopener in this water quality certificate. You can come back to us when you want through Chapter 2, Section 27, if there's a problem with eels. And now we're being told directly, oh, you can't do that. And you're being, the, depart, the, the board is being told, don't go down that route. That's bad. Now, I honestly want to ask the board to consider something. I personally have been lied to. I was told on November 3rd, Doug, you can go down this route. You can use the Chapter 2, Section 27 language. CLF was told that. And now, here we are. We're using it. And the board is being told, and we are being told, this is not an appropriate regulatory vehicle. The problem here is, is we're told, don't go down this path, go down this path. And as soon as we exercise that right to go down this path, we're told, oh, we're just fooling. That's not the right path. And personally, I resent being treated like this. I resent the disingenuous nature of the department's statements here. The department represented to this board that I had the option to go down this route on Mesolonsky Stream regarding protecting eels, and that that was the right way to do it, and appealing the permit was the wrong way to do it. The board took that under advisement, and several board members said, as long as Mr. Watts has another path to bring up his concerns about eels, then maybe we'll heed the department's advice and, and not approve his appeal. I'm being told today, as I was told two weeks ago, that a Chapter 2, Section 27 petition to modify a, a order is not the appropriate regulatory vehicle. I feel like I'm in a game of three-card Monty, and I don't appreciate it. I feel that in this particular instance, the department is saying, well, um, you don't have any photographs of eels below the Androscoggin dams that are chopped up. Um, I would submit to you that this is no different than saying that we can't be sure that fish in the Androscoggin River need dissolved oxygen just because they do in the Kennebec. And we're going to have to go and do site-specific dissolved oxygen tests in each river and below each dam to determine if the fish themselves need dissolved oxygen. This is the kind of burden that we're being placed upon here. Um, the Androscoggin lies <coughs> just north of the Presumpscot River and just south of the Kennebec River. Um, this board has found it um, in the public interest and in accordance with Maine law to require upstream eel passage on the Kennebec in the Presumpscot for the purpose of allowing these animals to live and prosper, and also <laughs> downstream passage. Um, again, I feel like we're playing a game of gotcha. Um, that, well, how do we know that eels need passage on the Andrus Goggin? Well, because you've said they need it on the Kennebec. You've said they need it on the Presumpscot. You've ordered it on the Kennebec. You've ordered it on the presumpscot. They're the same species. They're the same animals. 
The water's the same. The dams are the same. The turbines are the same. Every aspect of the issue is the same except for the name. One's called Androscoggin, one's called Kennebec. Um, I would submit to you that we have met our evidentiary burden here. We have demonstrated by analogy that if you've got a problem on the Kennebec, if you've got a problem in the Sebastocook, if the department, if the board has recommended a remedy for that, that by analogy, same fish, same kind of dams, there must be a problem in the Androscoggin. We've presented evidence in our petition from Maine IFNW showing that, in fact, adult American eels are throughout the Androscoggin River drainage. The little buggers somehow get up through these dams in small numbers. Now, we got this information, the, the, the map right here. This was part of my submission. It was part of Ed's. This is drawn from IFNW data, which shows the location where eels have been found in the Androscoggin River drainage. They've actually been found as far as Rangeley Lake, which is about as far up the drainage as you can go. Um, the DEP in the Gulf Island and Deer Rips um, proceeding said, there's no evidence in the record that um, there's eels up as far as Gulf Island and Deer Rips. Why didn't they call IFNW? That's where we got this. Why didn't the department call up IFNW and said, do you have any yield data? No, it's a game of gotcha. We have to go to the state agencies. We have to get the data, then we have to give it to the department. Apparently, the department can't call up their colleagues at IFNW and say, hey, folks, do you have any yield data? We, we're just curious because we've got these comments from a group that is asking for eel monitoring at two dams. Do you have any eel data? IFNW had no problem giving this data to us. I think if the department had asked for it, they would have got it as well. I think it's a question of will. You know, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to lose it right here because I'm going to say I am tired of being jerked around. Um, and I feel like the board has been misrepresented, and I think we have not been, we've been treated pretty shabbily here. Um, we've been, we're, we're, we're asked to follow down the little rabbit path. Um, and I, you know, I, I just think that we have presented a fairly thorough scientific body of evidence here, which shows there is a problem. Unless someone can show me that eels behave in a fundamentally different biological manner in the Androscoggin River than they do in the Kennebec River, then we've got a problem. Unless someone can show me that the turbines on these dams, on the Androscoggin dams, have rubber blades, then we've got a problem here. Um, we don't have to produce pictures. As I said on the Kennebec, the state of Maine has never produced photographs itself when it has imposed fish passage on dams in the Kennebec, on dams in the Presumpscot. We are being held to an entirely different evidentiary burden that the state holds itself to. I don't think that's fair. I mean, if we had submitted a two-page petition, very scant, no references, I could see the board saying, like, look, guys, you know, we need something here. Um, you know, I pretty much presented in my petition regarding a single river what I presented to the Department of the Interior in my Endangered Species Act petition. Now, the Department of Interior and Departments of Commerce found that the information that's in the Androscoggin petition, the same scientific references, was sufficient for a 90-day positive finding for a status review to determine if American eels within the entire United States merit protection under the Endangered Species Act. I've presented pretty much the same information to the Department of Environmental Protection, and they've said, nothing here. Doug, you have two more minutes. I'm all set, thank you. I just, sorry, I, normally I'm very. Well, I want to give you the time. No, I'm, I'm normally uh, so calmer, but I'm. So you're saying what you presented to us from the Kennebec is really the same to the Androscoggin? 
Um, I would, I would, I would ask this board um, to rely upon the scientific expertise within the department. The department's full of scientists. Um, this is not a. Um, this is a basic scientific question. I think that the. Um, the board should be able to rely on its technical staff within the department to ask if there is any evidence, any scientific literature which shows that e these animals behave differently in the two river systems. Question to the board? Uh, Doug, uh, uh, what, what a, how does